We're joined by Philip Striebel, Chief Market Strategist at Blue Line Futures. Philip, thanks so much for coming on the show once again. Yeah, thanks for having me. So it looks like this amazing rally in soy, wheat, corn is, well, it's wavering for now. We did see those prices going to multi-year highs, but they, they softened last week and corn was down again today. Yeah, if you look though, the soybean market had recovered today. The volatility has really kicked into high gear and not just only in the grains, but in most asset classes, the volatility index up 5% on the day. If you go into the agricultural markets, the funds have all been record net long on corn, soybeans, wheat recently. The export data has been fantastic. And even though you've got this large crop, the exports, what's been driving the prices higher. So when you get any kind of, you know, liquidation going on, and we saw this massive liquidation roll out for about two, three days, that was last week, you know, we're gonna get the recovery today. So, you know, prices, they're, they, they're getting a little frothy up at these levels. Do you think um, cereals could be dead money for now? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think so. I think that there's, you know, other asset classes that you could deploy into. What about oil, the big one? You say when you look at the chart, you're seeing signs of exhaustion. If you so you look at crude oil, crude oil has quite a bit of supply out there. It's really it's an economy reopening. It's a vaccine rollout play. The first thing people mm. are going to do once they're able to start travel around, you know, the U.S., they're going to start to, you know, you know, fill up their gas tanks, go on road trips, buy new vehicles, start flying again. Cruise lines are going to come all back on. So it's a front run, uh, the reopening play. We started getting along in there mid 40s. It got to the mid, you know, 52, 53. We pulled out of it. 51, 50 is your key level level of support. You know, the U.S. though, they're with the Biden administration. They're really changing kind of the way. You know, crude oil has been a major export here. Now we're probably not mm -hmm. going to have that dominant role. It's going to shift more to the Middle East, uh, Saudi Arabia. You look farther out on the curve. You know, the farther out you go on oil right now, the lower the prices, and they because. They believe that OPEC will continue to increase their production levels while the demand is not going to outstrip that excess supply fast enough. And also you highlight what you see as growing opposition or at least pushback to President Biden's massive $1.9 trillion stimulus plan. Yeah, we, we definitely do see that. And that's the reason why some of these markets have had some bit of a pullback because of the fact that you know it's going to be difficult for him to um, get this stimulus measures passed through you know it's uh, the devil's always in the details and when you know they give these guys you know four hours to vote on something and it's a 500 page document with a lot hmm. of different gray areas in it you know it's going to be difficult to to, to get that next hurdle if if there is a log jam in Washington, do you think that that presumably will be bad for oil prices? Well, I, I, I believe so. So oil prices. Mm -hmm. So oil, oil is all about the recovery and supply not coming online, you know, as fast as it as it has been. So we need to eat up the excess supply. We need the demand structure to pick up. You know, we do need to have the, the vaccine successfully rolled out as far as stimulus measures, I don't think they'll play much of an impact. Those will flow more into U.S. equity prices and equities will still travel higher. Now, gold and silver, you say, gold in particular, never decisively got above what you call a major three star resistance. What is yeah. your strategy on, on playing gold right now, Philip? So on the gold, so we do have in the back half of 2021, you're going to see interest rates are going to hit their highest level. Like the 10 year should hit about 159, somewhere right around June. That at that point is when it's going to start backing off and gold futures will go up. Also, economic data will compress at that point. From now until June, you're probably not going to see gold prices go up at all. Any rally in there really should be met by sellers, aggressive short sellers. You could have call options for the back half just in case something does happen. Day to day, things do change. There are you know, events out there that could occur that could change that shift real quick. But the rising 10-year note has acted as a major headwind for gold, and the dollar index could be bottoming out 
right at these levels. So if the dollar does climb, that'll also play a role um, against the gold market. Philip, I'm sorry, we've less than 30 seconds. We're seeing some pretty crazy trading, as you know, today. You see BlackBerry, GameStop, after these stocks were touted on social media posts. How should investors think about that? I'm sorry, yeah, they very really little time. They should, avo they should avoid those assets. I mean, that's purely gambling, speculative play, and doesn't really follow the valuations or the fundamentals.